Hey everybody, part two of this series on Vibe Architecting. We are simply teaching how to do proper software engineering up with your Vibe coding. So we're not letting go of the Vibe coding part, but we're just putting some few sane guidelines. Maybe it's not vibing anymore, but this I think gets the best results. So in the first video, uh, thank you for the comments, everybody. Uh, I did read all of them and you asked me to get deeper into these steps. So in this specific video, we'll dive into step one, two, and three. The first part is brainstorming your idea into a document. Second part is the deep research. And lastly, third part is getting tickets out of it. So a, a pretty much an implementation plan. So the first example I used was making a crypto research, a crypto bot doing arbitrage. It's a bit too technical, so I'll change the example and we'll say that I want an agent to manage my YouTube channel for me. I'm still building the bot. Uh, I'll give a few updates on it, but it's, I think, a bit too deep for a, a, to be a proper tutorial. And, and just the first thing I want to say is when you get into your brainstorming, obviously, I, I've been, you know, like I, I work as a tech lead. My product has 5 million users per month, so I am technical. I think you still can get good results if you're not an engineer or an architect. But I encourage you to read about the topic, about your product. I encourage you to read about software architecture. Even if it's a surface level understanding, you'll get much better results. So brainstorming. If we go back to this example of a YouTube agent or YouTube channel manager for me, I went ahead and I said, I, I went with my ideas. The thing is, I try to not go too wide or too deep. I try to avoid going three years into the future saying, I want the videos to be fully AI generated and I want to sell to both 20 languages. The reason I don't go that deep is that large language models are good at focusing on one task at a time. So even if we're preparing our vibe coding sessions for the next few days, I cannot go too far in the future or I'm gonna get poor results. And this is when you get stuck into those loops where the agent just doesn't do what you need to. So start with an ambitious project, but, but keep it realistic. So the type of brainstorming I'm looking for here is, you know, talk about the product itself. So I want to help manage my content business. I want to run it locally. Maybe I will sell it to people, you know, like you, you can say these things like, oh, okay, maybe that will influence the architecture. Maybe I won't do a SaaS, for example, software as a service. You can list your features. Super useful to understand where you go. The features I want, for example, is uploading the video for me, managing the posting, uh, posting it on X, LinkedIn, and Blue Sky after, just to, to tell people that a new video is out. And I said I want to use something like MCP, because I want to do this all from cloud uh, desktop. This is just my favorite you know, way of, of uh, controlling these agents, is just by chatting with them and not letting them fully loose. And I said, maybe JavaScript Nest framework, but I'm not prescribing anything specific here. So once you have half a page, one or two pages max, you take that document and you need to refine it into a usable prompt to get your product plan. So deep research will perform not a product plan per se, but like a product research. It will try to understand the technicalities the lay of the land, it will research. So what I like to do normally is that I like to use one of these prompts that I keep in handy and that I'll share in the video to refine this into a usable prompt, to refine my brainstorm into a prompt I can use with deep research. So if you go ahead, for example, I've done it here. I say, okay, this is the, the prompt I just showed you. And then I dumped right under it my brainstorm document. The result, that I get after this prompt is my research prompt, pretty much. It will say, okay, here are the core requirements. And then it says what you need to research. And this is important because you could let the research go loose. You, you, can, you can go wide or you can focus it. But I think by using that technique of getting, you know, like a proper research plan done, you'll get better results. So after you have your deep research query ready, you'll go ahead and you'll copy it. You'll go and you will put that query 
this is the exact same query. I pre-ran everything to, you know, make the video quicker because these could take like 10, 20 minutes. And I like short videos personally. So I went ahead and I started that deep research. And then you will get prompted with a research plan that you can customize. So Gemini and OpenAI will do that. I'm not sure if Grok lets you edit the research plan, but the idea here is that the research plan will tell you what will happen. Obviously there are branching paths. So deep research, they are great products because they're able to use these reasoning models to dig deeper into some of these. And then if you like it, you can simply start the search. And this is the beautiful part. When you are done with the search, you will see, by the way, step by step what is happening. You'll see where, where it's searching, the URLs. And if I go straight down to the end of that document, the sheer amount of URLs that were researched, it's just incredible. So I wanted, I said something about Entropic, uh, about MCP. It researched Entropic, which is the author of MCP framework. It researched also the competition, Bright Spot, which is a CMS. So it talked about, it researched architecture, it researched YouTube, it researched MCP. It, in the end, it gives me also a really detailed document. That document, I will use it in the next steps, but I also leave it in my code base for my vibe coding agents to have access to and to read and understand. This is critical because the more proper context, focused and good context you give to your vibe coding agents, the better the results are. So once you're done with this, the next step is that you want a formal product requirement document, a PRD. So I have another prompt which does the same thing. It says you will be given a brainstorming document and you'll be given a technical research and you must come up with a PRD. So here, uh, I did it in another window. I said, okay, you will be given, you know, this and your goal is to do a PRD. And by the way, I'm just copy pasting this. You could automate all of this with scripts and all, but I find sometimes to the idea of slowing down and, and seeing what happens, you know, keep a human in the loop is useful, especially because these systems are so new. We, we don't know yet where they're going. So they're really good, but be careful with everything you do. So the PRD is pretty much taking the research document, the brainstorm and making it into a formalized process. You can decide if you like it, you could tweak it. Personally, this first one, you know, it did talk about a local phase database, SQLite, which is exactly what I would have chosen as a user. It told the different integration endpoints. So this is a really good PRD, a product requirement document, and I really like it. It also went into the functional requirements. This, by the way, is all software engineering. It's what people learn in school. It's what we do in companies. So this is actually replacing automating people. So use it to empower yourself. This is what you should learn of this video is that these tools now mean you can do things that would have cost you hundreds of thousands of dollars before. You might not get the same results as like a senior engineer, but they're a first step to you, you know, learning the craft. And then the third step, you need to put this into thinking mode. Uh, by the way, I have been using for step two and three, I'm using Cloud Sonnet 3.7 in thinking mode. It doesn't need to be um, Cloud Sonnet specifically, it could be Gemini 2.5, could be um, 01, 03, but you want a thinking model. You want one that has the ability to reflect and plan. That's the important part of it. So step three, use a thinking model to cut into tickets. Back into my prompt library here. I'm simply saying in this prompt, you are a technical lead. You will be given three documents, which are the previous documents I did, the brain dump, the, um, the research and the PRD. And then the goal is to cut this into tickets. So I really went ahead and I copy pasted that exact prompt right after this. I, I just chained it right there just because all the documents were already in that chat. And that's exactly what happened. I am left here with something I could put directly to Jira, directly to my ticket management system. 
and it did exactly what I wanted. It said first, you know, like create an epic, which is a grouping of tickets together. And then it put the acceptance criteria, ticket by ticket. You could give that ticket copy pasted to a vibe coding agent and have access to all your documents within your code base. And you'd be able to get to steps four, five, six. So this is the idea. I'm going to be giving you all of these prompts. Um, the goal here is understand that there's no unique formula to this. This is my formula, but tweak it, adapt it, make it yours. The idea is to remember that we're used to clicking on forms and tapping on buttons, but now the input is language. So master the language of how you use these, these tools and you will be on your way to automating a lot of parts of your life. All right, everybody. So I'll be making after another part three where I'll do four, five, and six, which we're gonna get into the editor and code pretty much um, with, with Klein, which is my favorite agent in the moment. And um, let me know if you want me to continue this series. If there's good feedback, I'll do. If not, I'll get back to my just regular coding videos and uh, AI review videos. Have a good day, everybody.